I'm Commander Shepard, and the Unnamed Games Podcast is my favorite podcast on the Citadel. Shepard out. Hello, people of the internet, and welcome to episode 45 of the Unnamed Games Podcast. Did a little dance with me talking. I don't know why, and I'm going to probably need to stop that sometime soon. How about now? So, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I've been out in the sun too long today, I you think. You've had a whole beer at that barbecue, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One did. whole beer. Mm, yeah. It's a lot for a lot for a man like me. Anyway, uh, welcome and uh, welcome to my fellow compadres. We have a Mr. Thunderlips McQueen. How are you, sir? Oh, I am tickety boo, my friend. Tickety boo. Tickety boo. Lovely. And the man, the legend, Mr. Ratster tweets. Uh, evening all, well, morning all, good afternoon all. <laughs> Hello, basically. Uh, <laughs> Feel that energy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, come on, I just got out of the cinema and I'm still in that kind of that weird zone where I come out of the cinema and you expect it to be night, so you're kind of ready to nap. And it's like, oh, yeah. why is it still daylight? What yeah. is going on? Yeah, it's really like, it just you're like, ah! Like, yeah. I am discombobulated. Like, my, yeah. my brain is like, no, what? That's the word. That's the word I was looking for. Perfect one. Cool. Right. Well, this week, are we going to find out all the uh, usual what people have been up to? And they've got various different news stories that, uh, you know what, I'm just going to save it and you can see what's coming. So first Ooh. off, we're going <laughs> to see what he's been up to. And first I'm going to go to did, 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 did. Mr. Ratster Tweets. What have you been up <gasps> to, my man? Oh, I'm yeah. first. Oh, that's an honour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel so special. Um, I, I've, I've been up to a bit. You, you are special. <laughs> yeah, that's, do you know what? Has, has ever a truer thing been said right there? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I've been doing a few bits and pieces. I've uh, been painting models as per usual. I have been playing some Xbox as per usual. Uh, one of which is the uh, the Ascent, which I know we're going to talk about in a minute, so I won't get sort of deep into the Ascent. I uh, played a tiny bit of Microsoft Flight Sim because that obviously launched this week. Not enough to really give you an opinion other than say, oh, that's a pretty, 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 pretty game. Mm. Uh, like, really, really pretty game on the Series X. Um, just jaw dropping at points. But I say, not enough game time to give any worthy opinion. Um, and uh, yeah, I've uh, I've watched a few movies. I actually rewatched an old classic, which uh, it was kind of like you know when you're sitting in front of your Netflix and it's, it's there. And I was like, do you know what? I've been meaning to rewatch that for years. I'm actually going to do it because it's on Netflix and give it another punt. Um, and I'd forgotten. I mean, we all know it's a brilliant film. And as soon as I dropped the name, everyone would go, oh, I love that film. But I rewatched it and was like, this film is so clever and so brilliant, and it's just too good. And that was Fight Club. And oh. I watched Fight Club again, and. Yeah, like it, it's a film which I knew I loved and I knew that was brilliant. And then you watch it again and all those little just so smart script choices and, you know, mm. acting directions and, and all this stuff. And it is it just it's so good. Like it's so, so classic, good for me. Yeah, it's, it's you know, yeah. I, 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 I remember the very first time I saw it, maybe being a little disappointed with the end. But like it's, it's, it's an end that's only got better the more I've watched it. Like especially I think the end works better on a second watch because you had a different experience getting to the end because, you know, you know mm. the thing that you know i don't want to say as much as i like i know you guys like phil especially is yeah, like, oh the statue, statue limitations, limitations but, but by the same token if someone hasn't seen fight club mm, you can yeah. ruin that movie so quickly for them yeah. and it's such a brilliant like that that's why the movie is so brilliant and then mm. you go back to the second watch and it, it, it feels like a a different movie in some ways um and i've seen it more even, than twice but do you know what's even better is when you watch the video and they tell you about the bits that are slotted into the film like the the penis shot and then yeah. there's the tyler durden bits and then you actually you haven't mm -hmm. seen them because you didn't notice them the first time you just yeah. blink and miss it and then you go back yeah. and you go, oh my god how did i not see that the <laughs> yeah. first time oh yeah. my god such a smart film and Clear. like um yeah absolutely love that movie and it was it was such a like I don't know, just a, a real palate cleanser of late. I've been watching some real mm. rubbish, you know, deliberate rubbish. I know it's rubbish and I, I enjoy it because it's rubbish, but it's rubbish. Um, so I, I like another thing I watched was a, a film called The Final Girls, which isn't rubbish, but it's a, it's a deliberately hammy, cheesy movie, yeah, um, which was uh, basically it's, um, it's a really simple premise. A girl um, uh, whose mum was a scream queen for like one movie has become sort of semi-famous for it and live, makes a living sort of going to conventions. Her mum is killed, and then she ends up somehow going to, which goes to a, a special anniversary screening of the film in honor of her mum. And she somehow gets sucked into the movie with a load of her friends. And uh, I, I, it sounds really cheesy and lame. <laughs> 
but it plays out really well. Um, okay. And it's it's genuinely a really good watch. And I'd recommend it if you if you've ever watched a, a slasher movie, you know, like the Friday the Thirteenth, so yeah, you know, your Halloweens. It's a really nice sort of twist on that because it's, it's not a, it's got com- like it's it's hella funny at points. There's a black black comedy stuff in it and some straight comedy in it, but it isn't like a just a straight like comedy fest. It's not a slapstick version of it. It's still a like a horror slasher film, but with the black comedy and the dark humor in it, you know, so it works really well. And it's, it, it definitely delivers. It's worth, it's definitely worth a watch. You're never going to sit there and go, Oh my God, my life has changed from watching the final girls, but it's a fun film and it'll entertain you for, for the, the, the time it runs. And then the other thing I did, which I alluded to very early in the podcast was today I braved the cinema. Um, you know, it's actually my first post COVID cinema trip at all. And, uh, I went and saw the suicide squad. Um, before so I'm happy. Film, yeah, going to the cinema now. Do you have to mask yes. up? So no, there's uh, as as all the laws. There's no there's no law saying you have to be masked inside. Mm. It's entirely up to you whether you wear a mask through the thing, in, even into the cinema. Um, so it's personal choice. There was a lot of people not wearing them, which still makes me a little uncomfortable. But that's personal choice, and I'm not yeah. going to stand. I'm not, we're not here to tell you whether to wear a mask up or not. Mm. Um, you know, I'm just going to give you my opinion on the film um uh, and uh all right so i'm gonna try and do this like with zero spoilers like because it's um because it's a lot to spoil in the movie mm. um i'll start with the obvious thing it's got a mega rotten tomato score at the minute and it's r- riding really high on metacritic and stuff with the, with the critics and then the, the rotten, rotten tomatoes is like 99 percent, which is like you know it's among the best well, it's not 96 now i think sorry but at one point it was like 99 you know it's really really strong and it's a fantastically good film is it a 99 percent like yeah that perfect movie no but is it brilliant and entertaining? Absolutely. And there, is there some like some stuff you will laugh your yeah, belly laugh yourself in? Yeah, absolutely. There's some brilliant moments. Uh, I don't want to give any spoilers away. I will say this for it: how this movie is a 15, I do not know. Um, <laughs> it is psychotically violent. I mean, like really? yeah, like ridiculous. So, oh, again, first five minutes, first five maybe ten minutes, you literally see a guy get his face blown off. I mean, I'm not talking like a bit like oh, there's a bit of blood splatter. Like face, no face, crater. <laughs> basically, it's like it's that simple. And yeah. and it goes on from there. It just carries on like that, you know, that level of hyper violence. It's that it's that comic book hyper violence. It's like so if you ever if you ever read comics generally and, and Marvel have sort of stayed away from this in a big way, um, you know, that hyper violent, you know, you see people get torn limb from limb and stuff. Um it's done in the very graphic way you expect the comic to do it. And especially considering you're dealing with like the suicide squad, the bad guys who are gonna be brutal and a bit dark, you know, it is yeah, it's really violent, <laughs> like really violent, really dark. They drop so many f bombs. It's like so they like, they use the f bomb like hello in this movie. Like it's got swearing on a Deadpool level. It's got yeah. violence. I would say more gratu- more gratuitous and more in your face than Deadpool. How it's a fifteen is beyond me, but it is. And um, but as just a word of warning, if you're not got a strong stomach for blood and gore, it's maybe not the film for you because it is <laughs> wow violent. <laughs> you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to drop like you know who lives who dies or anything like that. I will say there's a tagline that's just been released for it, which is "Don't get too attached," and that's a very good tagline for this movie. Okay, uh, that's, that's all I'll say. It's a very good tagline for this film. There are some great comedy moments in it, like um, James Gunn really delivers. I would say it's got that really nice comedic timing, like the first Guardians movie has. And what I really really appreciate in it is that. Uh, and one thing I love, love, absolutely love about the first Guardians movie is it's funny because it's funny, not because they're telling jokes. Mm. Um, you know, that, that, one of my favourite moments in any Marvel movie still has to be when Gamora says to um, Star Lord, "Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, such a such a mess in here, or whatever it is." And he goes, "It's a good job you haven't got a black light. It looked like a Jackson Pollock painting yeah. here." <laughs> I, I, I was in a cinema and I just I was dying of laughter. But it was funny because it's just character humour, right? He's dropped the funny line, but he's not saying it to tell a joke or crack a joke. He's just funny. You know, and some of the Drax stuff where it works really well. I will, so I'm going to just give you a couple of personal highlights. St- Sylvester Stallone as King Shark is absolutely amazing in this movie. <laughs> he is an absolute highlight. The King Shark character is just, oh, it's so good. I mean, like, so fantastically good. Like, he, you see a lot of funny bits in the trailer. And if you think what you see in the trailers of King Shark is funny, he's funnier in the film. There's also, like, like better bits of it as well. Like, and yeah, it genuinely, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, Viola Davis back as Amanda Waller. She's great in it. Like really still got that, like really nasty piece of work about her. There is a really good, like buddy cop vibe between Bloodsport 
and which is uh, Idris Elba and uh, John Cena as Peacemaker. They have a really good, like almost good cop, bad cop, but like, you know, bad buddy cop movie thing going on the whole film. Uh, it's really cool. Um, there's, there's so many good bits. Uh, I have to say this, an obvious highlight, whenever she's on the screen, she lights it up. Margot Robbie absolutely slays as Harley once again. But this, in my opinion, is the best we've ever seen Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. She I've absolutely that, yeah. kills it. Like mm. there is a scene which is like the Harley sequence. And it's the best Harley sequence I've had on film. It's so, so good. She is phenomenal in it. Like, I mean, it's it's brilliant. It's 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 almost like film stealing, in my opinion. It's so good. Cena is fantastic as Peacemaker. Um, you know, uh, Idris Elba, the big stars, the ones that they're pushing and you can see are the big, big players in the film are excellent in it. I mean, really, really good. Um, there's some great, like really great funny moments. I, I mean, it's, it's it's so hard to talk about without dropping spoilers about, yeah. you know, who makes it to where or, you know, <laughs> if if this guy dies or that guy dies. You don't really want to spoil because that's half the fun of it. But um, yeah, it's it's amazing. There's, there was one scene which I thought was a, like it was... It was so obvious when the joke dropped. It was kind of a bit like, yeah, and no one really laughed at that point in the cinema. It was a bit like, okay. But then the immediately following like bits of humor that came out from the character-driven humor was 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 really good. Like like the the players all have you can tell everyone had a a, a riot making the film. Um, it's a film. What I think it shows more than ever, and we've said this before, is James Gunn was basically given carte blanche to do what he wanted with by Warner Brothers, and they stayed well out of it. Like you know, he said time and time again, they left him alone to make his own movie. Um, and it shows through through the whole movie, it shows that this is what he wanted to make. It doesn't feel like anyone's ever come in and gone, oh, can you can you not do that? You know, like we, we, we'd really, really rather you didn't do that. Um, and it also does one thing really well, which I think is great. It alludes to a bigger universe without directly referencing it or trying to shoehorn its way into it which I think the first Suicide Squad movie was guilty of, probably because we had this point where DC were just desperately trying to catch up with Marvel on the world building. That film and they was were guilty of many, choice. many things. But yeah, it's really... <laughs> uh, but I think what also sucks about this is, like, the vibe is so similar between the two in terms of... You can see if they had just let David Ayer make his movie instead of, like, trying to make a video, uh, music video-type movie, mm. we would have got this the first time around. We'd have, had, we'd have had two great Suicide Squad movies instead of one great Suicide Squad movie and one which just kind of... It's there, you know? Um, it's rubbish. It, it's, it's not great. I, I don't hate it like everyone else does, but it's not a great film. And it's and what's more annoying is that just that throughout it, it's just whenever like it starts to get going, you can just see that they kind of kick, kick the legs out from under it, where someone's just decided to change something and it doesn't really flow. And you can just it just reeks of it. The more you watch it, there's like these just things that don't fit together properly. This doesn't have that. There's actually some really clever like. Uh, movement of time within it so like it'll go like to this point and then go eight minutes earlier or you know this that and, and they'll jump around the time a little bit like that um and a, a little bit it was like okay can we stop doing that maybe it doesn't do it loads but it was like can we just tell the story but it, it also then when they do it there's like one right towards the end and it plays out really importantly why it works like that and why you see it in that order so it's it's really cool and um yeah i, I really enjoyed it i can't recommend it enough i would say it's my favorite superhero movie in a long time because it's really fresh. It's really interesting. Um, you know, Nathan Fillion is a detachable kid is um, Nathan Fillion. You've got, you know, loads of familiar faces, but I will say that tagline of don't get too attached is, is absolutely mm. perfect. And I can't, I don't want to, don't want to drop spoilers. Peter Capaldi is also brilliant in it, by the way. I will say that he's, yeah. he's actually, a, although I will say this, they kind of, it feels like they hired him when, you know, that thing you did where you were Doctor Who, can you just be Doctor Who in this movie, please? And it just, it feels like there's like a lot of his Doctor Who in this, but you know, um, maybe I think like. You're yeah. saying about that kind of don't get too attached. I think that was kind of the amount of stars and the amount of the, how yeah. big the roster is. You're like, yeah. we are losing a number of these. There's no way they're all going to have loads of screen time. Like, I, yeah. I mean, I, I really, I really want to tell you like how things go down, but I don't want to because it's, it's yeah. like, thing. Um, it is. So I will say this, the first like 10 minutes, I didn't really feel it. And it was like, mm, when I was watching it, but as the movie progresses, that kind of falls into line and it becomes, yeah, it, it, it felt better with me. But for the first 10 minutes, I was like, mm, I don't know what, what, what's going on here? This is a bit, you know, um, but yeah, there's some great, great character moments, great character beats. The characters we, we live with for a long time who do make it through beats of it. Some of them, you, you, you know, are safe. Like some of them, you know, are safe, right? Um, you know, there was no way Harley was going out early. Like, I'll, I'll just drop that spoiler. There's no way that's happening. Um, 
yeah, honestly, like she she just she sings in this film, absolutely sings. It's so great to see her do this. Um, yeah, as, as I said, you know, more Harley Quinn by Margot Robbie. I'm I'm all for it. Like just just keep bringing her back if you can because she's great. Um, yeah, does and I'll, win, I'll li- does she win the hot pants in this one? Uh, no, no, not the hot. So, so no, she doesn't. There's um. Mm. Like, I, I, can't, I, I really want to talk about like her little arc bit she has and her little story, don't. but it's I can't I don't want to spoil it. But I will say like we finally get to see like Harley Quinn like Harley Quinn's meant to be. She's not. She's like this 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 very tw- sort of twisted not twisted that's the wrong word for it, but sort of messed up character that she's she she thinks she's a good guy in some ways, whereas in fact she's just a complete nutter, you know. And like there's a there's a brilliant like 15, 20 minute sequence. Well, not it's not one sequence, but 15, 20 minutes of the movie where like she's quite prominent in it, and it's it's brilliant. It's absolutely mm. brilliant. Um, and I I, I I enjoyed the film a whole hell of a lot. I would give it a, like a four and a half, like at a te- uh, five, maybe maybe uh, you know four. It's, it's it's tough. It's 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 somewhere between four and four and a half for me out of five. You know, so maybe like if you took it out of ten, that'd be what like an an eight out of ten. So it's That's a brilliant four, film. Four and a half avocados. Yeah, four and a half of a card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why not? Yeah, um, so it, it's, it's definitely worth a watch if you if you're if you're into superhero movies, then yeah. But it is absolutely categorically <laughs> not one for kids. Like, don't think it's on HBO Max or you know we can we can watch it on like you know whatever. We'll do that. It, it's it's yeah, like it's it's just a uh, uh, yeah. Like they like said from the twisted mind of James Gunn, they weren't kidding. Like this dude likes to you know it's yeah, it's a good film. It's a good nice. film. I, yeah, I, I enjoyed he'd it. He said oh, that um, it was like it's the biggest movie he's ever done, and it's the movie he's always wanted to make and stuff, which is really exciting to hear from him. And all mm. the cast have been really kind of mm. really vocally praising what, what what they've been doing in the film. So mm. it's great because DC have had a, a lot of misses recently, and it's great for them to. How long may this continue that we start getting some decent stuff? Yeah, I mean, out. and I think it also mm. like going that DC thing. It's 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 great that like we've come off the come away from this. I don't want to say the Marvelization like it's a bad thing, but we've talked about this before. Marvel make Marvel movies, and we need DC to start making DC movies, not trying mm. to make Marvel movies. Yeah. Um, you know, and a, and a film called The Suicide Squad. If we'd have been like too lighthearted and fun when you're dealing with the bad guys, it, it, it wouldn't have worked. And it works so well because you know the characters are strong and they they play into that 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 sort of inherent darkness in them. Mm-hmm. You know, like I say, the the the, the Harley Quinn sequence. It's the darkest we've seen Harley by by a long chalk. Like. Um, Margot plays some of the sequences so well. Um, you know, Cena as Peacemaker really just nails it. Like that man is going to be like going rock levels, I think, after this. He's mm. it's it's the best I've seen Cena do anything acting wise. That's not saying a huge amount because he doesn't anything, but he's 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 brilliant in it. And him and Idris Elba bounce off each other so well, like as this like say but like awkward buddy cop movie. It's great. It also and again, uh, sounds to me oh. like it ties into something that we've discussed before, which is this: there's a huge market out there for adult superhero yeah, movies. Absolutely. So yeah. you know, and, th- and this is something DC have been a little scared about. Yeah, they are the darker of the two, but at yeah. the same time, a lot of the, a lot of these film production companies are very scared. And, and the fact that Deadpool got made in the first place was was nothing short of an achievement. Yeah, and miracle, same really. With, same with an animated series like Invincible. But these yeah. series are showing us, or the boys for Christ's sake, yeah. are showing that there is a massive adult audience out here. And we say adult, I mean, obviously 15, it just goes to show how old we're getting. You know, when you when you drive up to the Starbucks drive through and you look in the window and you think, they should all be at school. You know you've reached <laughs> a certain age. Yeah. Do, do you know, Alan, I, mate, years ago, I know the exact same thing you're talking about, because we were, we were, this is like probably 10 years ago, I was going to a club once and I was like, just hitting my 30s and I was like, we're stood there and we're standing by the door and like these kids around and we're just like... <laughs> They're never getting in. No get ID, do you wait? Right, the guy goes, "Can I see some ID?" They all just reach it, they pull out IDs, and we were like, <laughs> "Like, yeah. yeah, you're like, oh god, I'm that old guy now that thinks they all look yeah. too young to be drinking." <laughs> it's like, what is happening? You know. So you know, it's uh, it's exactly that. But yeah, uh, you are right, Alan. It's exactly that. They're leaning into their material really well and making an adult movie. You know, um, and it it, it shows. It, it definitely shows. I still can't get over it to fifteen. Genuinely, cannot get over it to fifteen. Like, you know. Um, and that's a good point to say before, before we do that. So I'm talking about the characters, and you get to that point where you talk about them. And I just cannot say enough good things about Stallone as King Shark. He he kills it, and he's so funny, and he's so entertaining, and it's just such a well-executed character. Mm-hmm. Like you will absolutely love King Shark in this movie. I promise you that. If you, if you don't, then he's he's another great character, a bit like uh, your, your Korg, or you know, yeah, someone. I'm trying to think who else is a bit like it. Um, yeah, someone who's got like the the. 
like doesn't yeah because he doesn't he doesn't really talk a lot but what he says is funny do you know what i mean a bit like drax does sometimes you know drax doesn't quite make sense he's not quite as smart as he thinks he is and he'll say something and it's funny and you're like yeah okay that's funny like like the whole bit of i've mastered the art of standing so still i become invisible <laughs> yeah like it's not as it's not as intellectual as that because you can't because king shark can't speak like that but like there are some like really funny moments of king shark like genuinely so yeah i think you'll have a blast watching it i would thoroughly recommend it like go see it or you know stream it when you can whatever it is rent it it's a great film it's a really great film so yeah there you go awesome. that's my attempting to be spoiler free hopefully like you know i didn't spoil anything um just enjoy the movie it's really good fun yeah really good fun wicked thanks mate nice one nice one just a quick question on the movie uh, obviously it's mm. at the cinema but it's also available on is it now uh, tv because they've got I, th I don't know if it's Max. i don't know if it's coming on uh, now tv or not i don't know if announced it was i think it'll probably end up being a premium rental a bit like wonder woman was or um black widow uh, black black widow was Carla will get upset again yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few like others like it. I can't think what else was like it from from uh, thing. I think June is probably going to end up being the same, where it'll be a premium rental. Yeah. Um, there was one re more recently as well from uh, Warner Brothers that was premium rental, and I can't think of so a life me. Uh, nobody was. was premium rental, and yeah, I, no I mean, there's, there's paying yeah. for it. Yeah, I, 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 if it is a premium rental, I can say this: if it if it cost me six, it cost me like a tenner to watch it in the cinema. Um, had I spent sixteen quid on a premium rental for it, I'd have been well happy. Like, you know, it, I, I felt it would have been value for money. Like, yeah. I still don't like that premium rental service, but I understand why it exists. But I, I don't think I would have felt short change, whereas some films, I think if I'd have rented them on a premium service, like, I don't dislike Wonder Woman 1984, but if I'd have paid 16 quid to watch it, I'd have been like, no. You know, that's not 16 quid worth a movie. And I know I'm, I'm in a minority of not disliking it. I don't particularly think it's a great film, but I don't think it's as terrible as a lot of it will say. But I wouldn't have paid, if I'd have paid 16 quid to watch it, I would have been a very unhappy man. I'd have been like, that wasn't worth that. Mm. You know, it, it, it kept, kept me entertained for two hours, but it didn't make me go, oh, wow, what a brilliant movie. You know, it made me go, yeah, past the time. You know, and I think that's almost a, uh, like a, a sin in itself, isn't it? You kind of just go, I forgot about it. Like almost as soon as I finished it. <laughs> you know, and I think with, with Suicide Squad, I'd have been like, cool, how long have I got it for? 24 hours, I'm going to put it on again. You know, that would have been my exact thinking, you know. Um, but yeah, again, I will stress this to people. If you've got younger kids who want to watch it or kids at like 12, 13 and you're not sure how they are, like just pre-watch it, give it a check. It is very, very violent. It's mm. very, very dark. And there is a lot of swearing in it. Like, you know, I yeah. do not understand how it's a 15 certificate. Genuinely can't. I can't get my head around that. <laughs> you know? Blimey. Blimey. So yeah, anyway, there we go. Cool. Moving on. Good stuff. No, thanks for that, mate. Lovely. Right. Over to the man himself, Mr. Thunderlips McQueen. What well, have you been up to, my friend? Well, I'm glad you asked me that, Craig. I'm very, very pleased that you asked me that. I've been up to a lot, to be honest. Um, not, not a lot from different from last week. I mean, I played uh, some more New World, which was the closed beta. That's finishing on Monday. And then we've got to wait until the 31st of August. But I have to say, we played a couple of times earlier in the week, didn't we, Craig? And I'm absolutely loving it, and I know you are um and definitely feeling it i think got to a certain level when things started to really ramp up and starting to get a real feel for it and i think there's a real opportunity when the full game comes out as you said there's some other people that you know phil weeks that we can play with and and you know sort of do a lot of the pvp stuff and the, mm. the company stuff so i'm really looking forward to the full release of it now i'm really glad that you talked me into getting it and, and trying the closed beta i've had a, a blast and very excited for the full release um i've been playing a bit more city skylines we posted and some videos on our whatsapp uh, i've got my population up to 50k don't say downtown i built a quarry downtown <laughs> <Things> <laughs> <are different. laughs> do you know what though alan i'm seriously before you put on that i there was a trailer for edgar wright's new movie on suicide squad today which is called La, last night in soho i think it is, is and, it the, and and the whole trailer is done to like a, a eerie version of downtown and as soon as it come on i was i was just laughing to myself <laughs> I was like, I'm the yeah. only person here who's going to find any humour in this. But for me, it was quite, quite humorous. So I'm, curr so, I'm currently yeah. working on, uh, as I said last week, going to post a video of maybe some some short videos of the city and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm going to get some video e editing software and, and work on doing that. But I'm playing some of that. Um, and I've been playing Ascent, which we're going to talk about after this. So I won't go too much into detail with that. Um, and today I've had a lovely day because I've been most of the day um, playing games with my wife uh, and playing Magic the Game gathering um which so we got all the card decks and we played some of that played a couple of board games played um uh zombies which is a, a good fun game and uh, also uh, i i talked her into buying a, a a new copy of talisman 
So uh, hopefully that'll be here next week. Have you got uh, a year think... to play it? Exactly. And that, well, that's <laughs> the old reason we don't play Relic. I love Relic. It's a beautiful game. It's beaut Everything in it is, is quality made. Yep. But it's trying to find anybody that will sit down for the six to eight hours it takes to play a game, at least six Yeah, to but eight so hours. why did you buy Talisman, which is the same game, but in <sighs> fantasy? Because, because I, 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 because it's glutton for punishment. I just, I, I love the game. I just, I, just no, I, 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 I think it's brilliant. I I think it's brilliant. It's one of my favourite things is the fact you can yeah. be turned into a toad. Like, that's yeah. one of the greatest yeah, things yeah. about Talisman. And so, the first time it happened, some of my friends and they were playing it. They're just like, "What?" And I'm like, yeah, "You're a toad now." It's like, yeah. "What?" <laughs> So, so, so even if we only play it for like two hours and go, do you know how much gold you got? Yeah, you're the winner. That's thanks very yeah. much. It's yeah. still going to be a worthwhile experience. So you know, yeah. um, and that's quality pretty much game. it. Been, been, been a bit of a, a, a pretty much a, a quiet week. So uh, yeah, that's got to be the shortest time I've taken in weeks to tell you yeah. what I've been up to this week. <laughs> cool stuff. All right. Well, I guess we could move on to me then. Um, yeah. So I mean, obviously, I've been playing New World as well uh, in through the beta. Um, I was very much a city owner because I, I got stuck into it for a good few nights um, and I was ploughing through, getting really absorbed into it. And it's the first MMO that I've really, um, really, really got drawn into, apart from the Old Republic, but that was purely because it was Star Wars. The game actually wasn't that great, but it was just it's Star Wars. So. Uh, yeah, it's a drop. It's a drop. Um, but uh, new one, I think that could because the combat is so action RPG rather than be... <sighs> kind of like a, a fruit machine, as I describe it. You know, you're kind of hitting all the buttons just to get your combos and make your lights flash in a certain way. I know that's really op oversimplifying an MMO and people probably shout at me for it, but um, I've always struggled with that type of thing. So actually going in there, you know, with your light, your heavy attacks, with your special weapons, your special powers, and kind of just, you know, boot, doing your skill trees. And, and, and I'm just absolutely loving it. I did say to Alan, I said, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back off it a little bit because we're not carrying yeah. any progress over from the beta. Um, and, you know, I'm just kind of, there's no point in me going and farming and getting all of this stuff. I, I didn't. I kept on going because every time I just <laughs> thought, I'll play a game. I really want to play New World. So <laughs> I was just jumping in. But that's obviously a really good thing. Um, you know, there's people out there a bunch of streamers and 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 uh, people of influence uh, who are some are really really positive on it some are a bit down on saying it's got real promise but it's not quite there yet and it's a bit brown as well isn't it yes our I've, very heard own that. Phil I've heard i've heard it's, it's very yeah. brown yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get <laughs> phil's take on it next week shall we when he's back see what he says <laughs> um but uh, yeah i'm absolutely loving it. i cannot wait to get stuck into it um and it's i think it's going to be my first MMO aside from kind of a destiny type thing that I'm I'm really going to get stuck into so well pumped for that obviously playing the ascent that we'll go into in a minute uh, but I've watched a film that I've kind of I've had it on the list to watch and I've never been that that fussed about watching it but um, my boys we, the other night my wife was out and they're like let's watch a film dad yeah no worries so we put on Gemini Man um, with oh, Will okay. Smith yeah it got and, panned um, didn't it so I'd love to know your take on this yeah it's I went in. With, <laughs> yeah. That did not start well, did it? Yeah. <laughs> I went in with very low expectations. It did not did exceed those expectations. <laughs> yeah. It was it weren't great. It was it was all right. It was kind of like how you were describing Wonder Woman 84, that it was sort of it you just killed a couple of hours and it was like yeah. eh. You know, eh, it was all right. Um, there was some fun action scenes in it. Um, you know, some of the characters were just a little bit hammy in the way that we're done. It was, it was all very cliched. Um, and I've got to say, I was, I was really quite looking forward to seeing how they de-aged um, Will Smith and how they had him on screen interacting with himself. But a lot of the scenes aren't done particularly well, actually. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of the young Will Smith, his his mouth doesn't move properly, and it's just the same kind of. Uh, yeah, it's just not very good. It's not very good the way they've done it. Some of the things are, are very, very good, but it's just some of the close-ups just don't seem to work right. Uh, but all in all, it's it was all right. It's on Now TV. It didn't cost me. If I'd have paid to rent it, I'd have been a bit like, oh, wish I hadn't done that. But, yeah. you know, I've already paid for my, my subscription for Now TV, so I wasn't so fussed. But, yeah, don't go out of your way to watch it. It's all right, but it ain't great. So, so uh, I to say, I, I I think that like, that that whole de aging thing is really interesting. At the minute, like, um, there was a thing I don't know if you guys saw it, but Disney have hired the guy who put the YouTube videos up, saying, "Oh, I've done better like versions of certain people in certain shows." I won't drop the spoiler yeah. for the, that particular show, yeah. but um, and it was like seeing his work, you're like, "Geez!" And but the, the guy never like the, the headline from the Verge was hire YouTuber. It's like the guy who's writing papers and is a bit of an expert on deep fakes. So he didn't just yeah. hire some random dude who makes YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> like they hired this like expert on the thing. But his work's amazing. I think that we're probably going to see that utilized more 
mm. moving forward and it'll get better. But the Uncanny Valley stuff is really difficult for people to make. Like a lot of people say that the mouth and the eyes are the hardest thing, but the mouth in particular, mm. because of the way like it moves, like it's really hard to replicate artificially. So mm. yeah, it's interesting to see. So, yeah. yeah, just like that. I mean, that doesn't even look <laughs> realistic at all, Alan. Not at all. <laughs> So CGI'd, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah, and I think really that's kind of, again, that's kind of uh, kind of what I've been up to. But that's going to move us swiftly on to a kind of a, a joint what you've been up to, oh. which we kind of uh, all mentioned briefly, which is The Ascent, which came mm. out this week on Game Pass, uh, on PC and on console, uh, uh, on the Xboxes. So Xbox One uh, and the Xbox Series consoles as well. Um, we decided literally bang on at six o'clock UK. <laughs> time which is a really strange launch time we thought right we're just a happy on coincidence a on a thursday yeah on a thursday yeah a very happy coincidence that all of our podcast were on uh, at the same time so myself phil chris and uh, and alan so we all jumped on to have a game didn't we and who wants to kick this one off i'm gonna, well, I, I was gonna say when you say we all jumped on what happened was me you and alan jumped on then you went and got lunch two minutes into that so or sorry dinner so that yeah. um me and alan were then left to explore and then you came back and we started it again and played through the same mission again and then phil came along and jumped on and then me and alan and you played through the same mission so me and alan yeah. did the same content four three four times i can't remember but it was ridiculous yeah, yeah. um but I, 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 I suppose I'll, I'll go from there. Um, mm. First impressions were really positive. Like it looks just wonderful. Oh, yeah. it's like if you if, if you if you want to see what cyberpunk is supposed to look like in video game form, look, look at the ascent. It, it it feels so legitimately cyberpunk. We were all sat there, and I remember like me and Alan were both like, "Oh my god, so Blade Runner, so Blade Runner." And then Phil came in, and, "Oh my god, it's so Ghost in a Shell." And yeah. I don't think either of those things are wrong because mm. those are two of the most like what what biggest benchmarks in cyberpunk yeah like oh, in terms of hugely in iconic. terms of in terms of video or you know movies mm. there are you know like blade runner defined that live action one ghost in the shell is is the uh, you know the anime equivalent of like that nailing it down and, and i think you know to, to, to be referenced against that like that's our first impressions that tells you that they've got something incredibly right about the aesthetic mm. of this game it feels really legit cyberpunk. Like it's it so feels good. Next gen. It feels next yeah, gen. It does. Yeah, it feels it's really the good. First um, game on release where I've actually looked and I thought that actually looks. That's got the graphics of a game of the next generation. That's what I'm expecting. It, it, well, I think that's really, really impressive though, that they've got it running on like the old Xboxes, especially on like, the old Xbox One S, you know, or One Launch, whatever you want to say. I mean, they're not. I mean, it doesn't run fantastic on it but it runs on it and i think that's a real real testament to to the 12 man team that made this game mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. holy holy hell you know like i mean like, again we'll come to that it's a 12 man team so there are there are some problems i'm not going to give it all like shining like oh it's so great um but when it works boy it works and is it fun oh mm -hmm. hell yeah i'm having a blast of it like it's twin stick shooter meets rpg ish um yeah i love it i think it's brilliant i think it's exactly what i thought it would be and it's doing it well. I mean, yeah, not perfectly, but well. Like, the game is fun. It's engaging. The characters are good in it. The graphics are great in it. The sound is wonderful, especially the music. Whoever did the music of this game, hat, hats off to you. You've nailed that. Do you know what? It's yeah. funny because I keep listening to different music tracks and I keep going, that sound. It's like when you go into the bar, that's the mm. Star Wars Cantina. Yeah. When you first go out on the first promenade, that's Blade Runner. When yeah. you first go to the title screen, that's Ghost in the Shell. It's like yeah. it's taking all of these influences and the music pulls and every single tune that comes on, you're like, that's a tune. And that's a tune yeah. from, a, from a cyberpunk type, you know, yeah. type of media that yeah. I know. It's just... Perfect. It's it's together. it's so. It, I think that's exactly it, Alan. Like it, it keeps. Whenever I keep seeing things that are like Blade Runner or whatever, they don't feel like they've just lifted it from Blade Runner. It feels no. like they've taken that inspiration from Blade Runner and gone. We need to put like this is this is something we want to like. It's going to influence our game, and we understand mm. that people associate this with cyberpunk. We need to kind of make it feel that without being that. And I think that's something which I really love about it is that it feels original, but at the same time feels like it's. It's it's very much in honor of its genre. It knows its genre. It's it's self aware enough to, to produce a great genre. Feels piece. familiar, but it's different yeah, enough. That's yeah. a great way to describe it. It's mm. familiar without being the same. You know, mm. like, and I think that's it. it kills it. Like, I, I'm just so impressed with what these what these this small hit studio have produced, and just the fun element. I don't care. We, we talked about this with the accessibility bit a little bit about, about having fun. I'm having a blast with it. Like, it's just a fun game. 
you know, uh, like I, did, I, I was playing it a bit earlier. It wasn't with you guys. I was playing it with uh, Luke and Chet, to my buddies, and we were just uh, exploring the city. And we did like uh, one where suddenly there's guys with can- katanas. I don't know if you've come across those guys yet. Mm. Like coming at you with swords. And I was like, whoa, where do these guys come from? And they've got like cyber cloak so they can disappear. So I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, you know, and uh, yeah, and it's got challenging step ups, but not too challenging. Doesn't feel unwilled. The augments, the, cy- the way the, the cyberware works and stuff, absolutely brilliant, intuitive, fun. The augments you can get are really, really fun. Like I've got one which is um, called, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but basically you hit the button and it just literally empties your mag at whatever targets it can and it doesn't miss a bullet. Every bullet will hit something. Mm. And so we were, we were having trouble with the boss, uh, with the other guys I was playing with today. And me and Luke were both running that augment. We just picked up these LMGs, which had 100 round mags. And we walked in and we were after being died a couple of times. And me and Luke, just without even saying it, just both basically hit this, this augment and just unloaded these LMGs into the boss. It was like, boss is dead. <laughs> you know, nice. Moving you got, on. You got a new uh, tactical grenade, didn't you, today, Alan, when we were playing? Uh, oh, I did. And it, I, I can't remember what it's called, but it basically. Is it the Vortex one, the Sweet Justice. Yeah, yeah it's based Sweet, Sweet Justice. Justice. That's it. And it's essentially, so it's essentially, it's just like a black hole. And just, yeah. Everything. Because, I mean, one of the greatest things is like the, the quality to all the little intricate parts and so many different mm. bits moving and level of detail, not just in the levels, but in the character mm. model. So you just you come out and you're like bah, 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 with your gun and you put all these bullets into this character and it just literally explodes and then you have this opposite thing with this grenade where you chuck it into a group of bad guys and they'll get sucked into nothing and just all this gibbage just comes and say <laughs> it's just it's just epically gruesome and cyberpunk and, epic. and how good is the sound when the grenade goes yeah. off as well yeah. like kind of sub bass war <laughs> it's like yeah no. like I first threw it and Luke's like what the hell was that yeah. <laughs> I'm just like. Yeah. That's my grenade, yeah. <laughs> I've been loving. I did uh, get myself the riot gun, so the the yes. shotgun with four rounds. Oh, I do love point blank with a shotgun's really good fun. Um, and I've also got a little mate now, so a little robot mate. I hit oh, the I button. Got one yet. Yeah. yeah, he jumps out with a gun, and he's like, he's got like a yeah. kind of a like a plasma rifle type thing, and he draws right. lines of the aggro. So you can kind of, we did that. I dropped him out, didn't I? And then you ran around mm, the back, yeah. I think, Alan, and punched a guy with a shield in the back of the head, yeah. and punched yeah. him into oblivion. He just basically was a smear on the wall, but just came around right. and used the augment punch. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I, it's for the me, best it's, cyberpunk it's, experience in years. Yeah, yeah, opinion. I'm absolutely yeah, much the same as you guys. Really, really enjoying playing it. It's great fun. Um, I've played a because I actually started again on my own just to kind of experience the start bit, just take a bit more time and kind of read a few more bits and just get myself immersed into it a little bit because it's a bit frantic when there's four of you playing. It's just like stuff <laughs> going off everywhere. It's madness. Um, and uh, I must say because. For all the praise we can give it, there is there is some downsides to it. Certainly, I was so, going to come to this as I could. Yeah, do. within the within the single player experience, um, I've had well, I haven't experienced any bugs yet. Um, we've tried it four player, and equally, myself and Alan have been on doing a bit of two player. I've done a three player. <laughs> done a three. All right, so we, we've had all all examples across the board. Um, particularly when we played four player, there was a lot of bugs, connectivity issues, people getting disconnected. One of the most annoying ones I've found, and we actually experienced this on two player, didn't we, Alan? Where yep. if two of you talk to the same vendor at the same time, one, one of, of you seems crashes. to get stuck in the menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, um, never makes so, it to the actual menu. You just, and what's yeah. more annoying about that, that wouldn't be so much a problem if the drop in, drop out worked properly. But once you're in the game, you can't reinvite someone back in. Mm. So you end up with this frustrating thing where you've both got to go back to the title screen. So you've got to dashboard it. Things. Mm. So that's a patch which needs to happen fast, in my opinion. Mm. So yeah, but anyway, I'm, st- I'm stealing your and your the clicking training. noise and the clicking noise. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a very often in combat, all of a sudden it will take one gunshot and it'll just go ding, 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 and it'll just go on forever. And it doesn't matter where you go in the game; it's still going on in the background until you yeah. literally go mad and go and murder your neighbours. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe, so that just, maybe, maybe, that was, maybe that was just me. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah. No, it, I, I very much would like the game as, as much. As I was desperate because this is. I think me and Ratley both, when we first saw this, the first time we, we saw a trailer, we had both said it was our most anticipated. It was, it was on my game. games of the year. I was most anticipated for. I think, yeah, yeah. I think if, 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 if I if I hadn't had it, you were going to have it or something like that, or we both had it. I can't remember. Mm, yeah, but see, yeah, I wasn't. I, I I wasn't that. I wasn't that worried. And especially when I heard it was a twin stick shooter, I was kind of yeah, you know, it looks nice. Yeah, of course, I can see how how gorgeous the game is looking, and I can I'm reading about the you know 
know the coalition how much work they're putting into it this small team is that what they were called the coalition was it? no that's that's, no, that's no. the gears um, sorry it was the, neon giant that's neon the neon giant. Giant. um yeah so uh, and i was kind of like yeah i can see it looks like fun but I, I, it's going to be a, a one-trick pony for me and i'm going to get bored very very quickly and then as soon as you even you pick up the pistol and you start like running backwards and you start shooting and pumping in and then your first couple of guys get a bit exploded and and <laughs> all of a sudden there's a bit of gore and you blow something up and everything and all of a sudden you start and the more guns and the more in depth and the more orgs you start to put in because there is some real depth and legs to this this sort of like rpg mm. element with the gear and and kind of you can you can level up your gear and your armor and everything else and you start look at that guy and you start yeah. to feel like you are so badass and the combat is fast and fluid and fun it's just fun and it's also tactical so you don't feel like you're just randomly firing into the void and hoping to hit something it's about precision which actually i said there's one thing in the game where you actually you can see like the stream it's like there's like a laser pointer that shows you where you're shooting which means everybody else in your team can see that you're <laughs> crap at shooting yeah. and you're shooting everything else in the level except what's running at you trying to kill you so you know there's no hiding in this game if you're yeah. if you don't learn and you don't get better everybody is going to know how shit you are yeah. it's, 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 but it's so much fun i can't i can't reiterate that enough mm -hmm. i was just like yeah bugs aside i just still want to put it on yes still, 100%. Uh, once once it's crashed and we've got we've gone back out again i'm like oh i've had enough i mean we were all tired the first night on thursday we all had a working day apart from you chris sorry uh, and then you know and then we <laughs> ouch Hold on. Oh, is this yours, Alan? Oh, I think I've <laughs> hey, hey, I'm just stating the obvious here, brother. <laughs> but anyway, um, um, but we were all tired, and I think by the third or fourth bug, and we've been kicked out of a major mission, which we, which literally spent what 20, 30 minutes playing through this yeah. mission, got to the end, and right at the end, it crashed, and it put us right back at the beginning. We were kind of like, you know what? I don't want to do that again. Yeah, but yeah. other than that, every single time I just want to get back in and I just want to keep playing it because it's just joy to play. And I want to see what else this game has to offer. The deeper I, I think RPG that's the big elements. thing. Like, yeah, I think that's a really good point. Alan. is like, I'm frustrated with it, but it's not, it's not like the difference between I had the experience with this and cyberpunk 2077, for example, was like cyberpunk got to the point where it became like just the thought of playing. It became a chore. And I know I'm not that far in with it at the minute, but Cyberpunk that started to happen to me pretty early because I was having a lot of problems. We've talked about this yeah. a lot, but like, I was I was just running into bug after bug after bug after bug after bug. I, I had I had probably one of the worst experiences of anyone I know with Cyberpunk. Um, and I just got fed up with it in the end. Then it, it got to the point where I was forcing myself back into Night City to play it, and it took the shine off Cyberpunk for me. Whereas with this outdoors, whilst like I've I've hit bugs and they are annoying, they're certainly not. Like to that point where I'm like, oh, for God's sake, I will bitch about it and I'll moan about it. You can you can ask Luke and chat. I was like, oh, as if it's in this state when it launched again, you know, another buggy game. Mm. But I think that's just frustrations about the buggy games in general. This is as the bugs go are annoying, but the game is so good underneath that, that I don't care. I will keep playing it and I'll have fun with it. If if I hit bigger bugs, which are more problematic, then maybe it will kick me off. But I'm I can't. I would say if you've got a if you're on Game Pass, it's a no brainer. Right? Why aren't you downloading it right now? Why haven't you downloaded it? Um, if you're if you're not and you're thinking is it worth 25 quid like it i've is. got it on game pass mm -hmm. and i would still pay 25 quid yeah. for it to support the developer in theory i mean i won't i won't right now because as alan alluded to it's not like i've got loads of spare cash kicking around <laughs> do you know what i mean so um you want to uh, bum yeah what a what a bum eh uh, um so uh, but, but you know it would it would have been like one of those games which, which if, if it had been on game pass and i was like working and had, had money in my pocket like to spare i'd have probably played it and gone you know what it's that mm -hmm. good i'll buy it because you know, if it ever comes off Game Pass, I want to be able to have access to it. I absolutely think it's worth 25 quid. I think it's worth 30 quid. I think mm. it, it, it's priced really well for what it is. I can't speak to the length of the campaign because we, we've only, obviously, we've all just got stuck in. But there's, so I mean, I've been in it for, you know, probably about 10 hours, I would think, so far, give or take. Yeah. And I've only really scratched the surface off. I've only done a couple of main missions, a few side quests. Yeah. Like just running think... about is so good. You get sidetracked into all these little yeah. alleyways, into gunfights and bounties, and you're like, you know, From what I've really... read, I, I think it's around a fifteen to twenty hour campaign. But when you a get week to, to that, you. yeah, when you get to that point, um, it can after you have sort of finished the main campaign, it will dump you back into the game to go and do loads of side quests and stuff. Mm. So there is the replayability. It's and also, you can, you can uh, 
it's also worth pointing out that it does have couch co-op, which is extremely mm. rare yes. this day and age. Yes, huge thumbs up for that. Now, now that COVID is nearly over with, there. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, <laughs> but you can go around and play a game with your mates. I mean, this is something obviously all of us are very fond of, as far as memories as being, you know, teenagers and younger people, which mm. we aren't now, you know. But going around your mates' house and playing games, and it's all online gaming now. You know, this well, is even this brothers fantastic. and sisters, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. families. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, I'll tell you one thing. I don't, you're talking about like I think a good a good way to sort of wrap up is like I think if you're a fan of certain games, like if you're an old school gamer like us, if you ever played Gauntlet. I get gauntlet vibes from it constantly with four people on screen. I don't know why it just feels very gauntlet mm. to me, mainly because like health packs and stuff, like you have to be, oh, who needs it? You know, it's like that was very much gauntlet. But that whole horde thing, I, I love that. It's not the same as gauntlet, but I get those kind of vibes from it. Boulder's Gate, Dark Alliance, if you're one of those, it's definitely a game if you like that. Uh, not not the recent Dark Alliance, the original Boulder's Gate one, like that. I think those two, that was something that the Digital Foundry guys said was a great thing. As soon as they said it, I was like, oh, cool. And playing it, I can totally see what they mean. It's got that kind of vibe to it. And then, you know, going, going to say, like, Gauntlet. For me, those those kind of games, if you're into that kind of thing, you'll, you'll really enjoy this game. I think mm. it's a really good, fun game. Yeah, I think it's a real testament to the Unreal Engine as well. You know, mm. the fact that you can have such a small team develop such a fantastic product. Um, yes. And, you know, Unreal Engine being as kind of open as it is that anyone can kind of pick it up. And, you know, if they want to just not pay for the for the engine and just then yeah. kind of give part of their profits over to Epic after there's so many different ways to get into it. You know, it had me thinking, you know, maybe we might see some, you know, mods mm. in it or, or, or community driven stuff maybe in the future might be quite nice. But there's, uh, yeah, but there's been a lot of stuff around mods going on recently, hasn't there, Alan, actually? Well, uh, I, I, I'm a big developer. Yes, uh, I mean there, there are some major upsets in the uh, the GTA modding community actually at the moment. Take two have been generally annoying a lot of people. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, take two if you don't know our Rockstar's parent company, and they spent the past week sending out DMCA takedown notices to a lot of modders, uh, specifically on a modding site called ModDB. Um, and it's fair to say that some of these mods that they're, they're, they're demanding be taken down are actually quite old. I mean, from from San Andreas, GTA San Andreas, which is 2004, um, from Vice City, which is 2002. So we're talking for mods for games that are 17 and, and 19 years, respectively. Both classics in their own right. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, they're demanding that these modders remove them from the site. And they have been removed. Um, and some really big mods such as uh, one called gta liberty city which is a total conversion of vice city um and that basically ported gta 3 into the vice city engine um, and this was first released back in 2005 so even the mod itself is quite old um, and then we have gta underground which is a popular mod that mm. was it's trying to merge multiple gta maps into one massive game and both of these have been now deleted from mod db from the demands from take two and and the thing is the mod community obviously they're very passionate about these these things um and very committed and they reached out to take two and to rockstar and were basically met uh, as far as we can tell with a stony wall of silence um, and absolutely nothing coming back from either company. Um, and, and the thing is, there have been rumours, and I, I know we've discussed them on here for some time, about a possible remake or even a remaster of Vice City or San Andreas, which I would personally love. A remake of San Andreas mm. is one of my favourite GTAs, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Um, and that would make sense, you know, if, ta if, if Take Two are thinking, OK, so this is going to be a source of revenue. We don't want these guys encroaching on what this new product that we're going to be announcing and putting out soon kind of makes sense. But what doesn't help is this this total wall of silence. Um, and in many cases, to me, it seems like they're shooting themselves in the foot because the only reason people are still playing these games online is because they are modding them it's because they are using these mods to be able to up the graphics scale to be in fact some of the software doesn't even work unless you have mods to actually play it so you kind of you know it, you, it seems to me like a really ridiculous thing to do um and this isn't the first time you know i'm kind of trying to weigh it up and say well is this because of like possibly them releasing a remaster but the reality is it's not the first time they've done this recently they did it in uh, 2017 when they were forced a, a popular modding tool called open 3 to get shut down um and at the time the backlash was massive from the community and in the end rockstar and take two actually backed down and actually allowed the modders to use the software but they implemented some rules uh, and essentially to break those rules down into one simple sentence it was don't mod gta online stick to single player mods and don't sell your mods 
Okay, and that was that was kind of the premise, and that was fine. But then in 2019, they sneakily added another couple of lines into this without really telling anybody <laughs> in the community, and they then check text it to this. This does not apply to use or importation of other IP, including other Rockstar IP, in the project or making new games, stories, missions, or maps. So. You know, either Take Two are just being complete dicks about it and they don't like it, or there's a real business reason for them doing it. But at the moment, they're looking like absolute asses because they're just they're not giving any respect to the modern community. And at the end of the day, if it wasn't for that community, there wouldn't be so many people still playing these. Let's face it, twenty-year-old games. Mm. I mean, I think, I think, yeah, I think that, that you say there's a business decision, and whoever made that business decision is stupid. Because the the, the you know the, 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 it's a business decision where you'll go oh yeah we don't we we want to make sure you know we're in, in you know keeping the community happy like blah, blah blah your community is the modern community right now that that are the people yeah you know, they're one of your core audiences for this game like don't kid yourself they're going to be like the people celebrating it like, it would be been, been like you know take 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 BioWare's acceptance of the modern community on Mass Effect where they basically went we use that as a yardstick for how we updated the Legendary Edition they were they were complimentary of the modern community mm. they talked about the modern community in a good way. Um, and I think that's 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 something which take two need to take stock of and think that you, the only people you're hurting here is is yourself because these are the fans of your product, your, your most ardent fans of your product. Why why do you want to go after your biggest fans? It's it's yeah. insane. Doesn't it's make literally sense. the dumbest thing, you know. You like, could, let's you take could, the people who like, like, like if it was growing. directly affecting their revenue yeah. stream but yeah, absolutely. it's not is it and I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm only going on a I, I don't think there's anything that can directly affect their GT online revenue <laughs> well yeah there. yeah but by, by the end of the world Armageddon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but you know it's I mean I might be totally wrong with this but I'm assuming that to play these mods you'd need to have a copy of the game am I right yes I, I, you do yes so yeah so yeah. If people are creating new content for an old game that they still sell, and they go, "Oh, that mod looks interesting. Oh, I can still pick GTA up for a tenner or whatever GTA Vice C. I might buy that." So that's still hey, is it seventeen p on Steam? Because if it's not seventeen p on Steam, well, I'm not it. buying it. That's it. There, there. No <laughs> mods for you, then, my friend. Um, but uh, yeah, it just you know, it, it just seems yeah. like they are just eliminating part of their audience. And I totally get that if you know, sullying someone's art, something like that, I suppose. But it's the same as, like, I don't know, a car company, um, you know, having a go at people who put a spoiler on the back of a Clio or something like that. Well, yeah, that's a bad, ex bad, bad example. That yeah, I mean, to be clear, those, those people are entirely justified. Having yeah, to but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're just, uh, you know, for the love of something, they're modifying it and making it, personalising it and making yeah. their own. It's a similar sort yeah. of thing. It just but seems this, to be this is the problem, yeah. isn't it? And we've touched on this before, and this is the fact of the matter, is, is that you don't necessarily own digital content. That mm. content is something that you have essentially rented or you have the ability to yeah. access. And when they decide you no longer have that ability and that's written into many clauses so that's why they can shut games down stop games from no longer being used and then you have no recourse as a consumer so ultimately they they may have a justification in the fact that they actually own the intellectual property but i'm totally on board. i mean i don't understand it either because gta 5 even online there's millions of youtube videos of people who've modded it mm. And they, they don't seem to be stopping them. So why are you, I mean, you know, people with cartoon characters and all kinds it, of weird uh, stuff. And, it's, and it's, it's like... Yeah. It's got to be what you said earlier. They're going to they're going to launch a remaster of these, like maybe a GTA collection. It's the or only thing that makes sense. And, and what what what, what makes doesn't. what makes me question this then? If if you're just going to release a, a GTA collection, like are you just being the ultimate lazy bums and just repackaging the games as they stand right now? Okay, and going yeah, we just we just made them run on modern consoles, right? So you don't have to have a PlayStation One. Or PlayStation Two to play. Oh, no, you can play them on a on a current generation, but they look exactly the same, you know. Because if they've done that, then they then and they've gone after the modern community to stop them stop the the modern community making them look bad. Then just jog on, you know. Which I hate to say, it wouldn't surprise me, um, you know. Because as, as I, everyone knows Mor my opinion of, uh, of of Mass Effect Legendary. I I love the game, but I still think Legendary Edition is a bit lazy. They didn't do enough to en enhance it. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, it's not it's not a disaster thing. And seeing the Dead Space uh, announcement, EA have got on board with the whole remaster. You know, re rebuild the game, keep the keep the spirit of it, but move it on. The um, so I mean, I, I get it, but I think this is this is the worst kind of behaviour from a publisher. You, you're alienating your core audience. You know, stop it. 
Treat treat your audience with respect. They are the people who got, got you where they are. Keep keep your core audience happy because they're the ones you want to you want to yeah you, know, you want to. It will buy your product. Mm, definitely, crazy. you know, we, crazy. Digital, we're all sitting in front of our screens, we're all sitting at our computers, we're all you know looking for new things to do. Particularly over the whole kind of the, the lockdown stuff that's been going on, people mm. have been so snuck into stuff that you know that that would have been prime time for these mods to kind of grow that old product. And I just go back to it, you know, with these these revenue streams. But you know, it's. Um, yeah, certainly within COVID, obviously, there's been a, a few success stories even outside of the digital realm, hasn't there, Chris? Yeah, well, I mean, we saw one recently with uh, Games Workshop in the UK who make Warhammer. So, uh, you know, just, to, just to, I've got, let me uh, just grab one of my dudes here. Here's a, uh, here's a Warhammer dude. Here he is, look, that little guy there. I said, that's a did Terminator. You, uh, did you paint that? He's just sprayed black to be primed. I haven't painted was that, was got, that got... difficult? Was that difficult to do that, Chris? To paint it black? Yeah. Um, I asked the Rolling Stones. They 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 know a lot about painting things. Black. Let me let me ask you um, one more time, Chris. Was it difficult to do that? Oh, incredibly difficult, mate. No, no it's super so it easy. Super, super easy. Barely any convenience. Barely any convenience. Oh dear <laughs> lord! He set it up for you, brain, dude. Brain fart. No, oh, I'm so I'm so disappointed in myself. I'm so disappointed in myself. <laughs> So disappointed in myself. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry. Oh, just just on a just bit of a tangent. Oh, if you haven't no. seen it, you need to get on and watch on the Screen Rant YouTube channel. It oh. is the pitch meeting. There is hundreds of videos on there yeah. of a guy oh, pitching well, well, a well, meeting well, well, to well, himself. Well, well, well. Uh, and he's got loads of really cool little one-liners that he does. One of which is super, super easy, easy, barely an inconvenience. <laughs> And my other favourite is oh wow 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 I don't know. I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back about it. Anyway, yeah, the pitch meeting pitch is done. Honestly, those guys, brilliant. Can't 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 emphasise enough. You'll laugh and laugh and laugh. Um, so yeah, Games Workshop. I've had a bit of a bumper pandemic. They're um they're just they're just reeling in the cash. Basically, people have got stuck inside and have either like decided now is the time to indulge the Warhammer army they've been after for ages or just been looking for something to do and I've got stuck into Warhammer for either their casual gaming or their more hardcore gaming. So by casual, I mean they do a few boxed like skirmish games, um, one called Underworld, which is like you have three or, three or four men on a team and you, you fight each other, dice. It's, it's fun, good game. I know I sold that in really... Uh, oh, yeah, like uh, enthusiastically there, but under, honestly, Underworld is great. You'd really like it, I think, Alan. There's deck building, dice rolling, minis. It's a really cool game. Um, and it's, it's pretty quick for a Warhammer game. And then there's like Warhammer 40k and Warhammer Age of Sigma. Um, and everyone, I think everyone, a dog who's lived in the UK has heard of, you know, Warhammer 40k. It's these futuristic space battles, space marines, Daka Daka Bolters, you know. Um, and so basically, Games Workshop have slayed it through the pandemic. They've had their profits went, whoop! you know in one direction and one direction only which was massively up uh, and they were so happy with the performance of everyone who's been working over the pandemic they looked at um all of their you know uh internal teams who've been working whether it be production whether it be with the people in charge and they've given them all massive bonuses uh five thousand pounds in fact which is not to be sniffed at that's mm. a nice bonus if someone here's 5k i'd be like yeah. Okay, uh, you know you uh, that is is sign of a, a blooming good company that takes care yeah. of its employees, yeah. unlike some which we'll be talking about in a little bit. And yeah. it shows that they they appreciate <laughs> that these people have put themselves, you know, they've worked hard, they're, they're doing what they needed to do to step up this. And, and Games Workshop are seeing renewed success and energy, which is great because I love the product. Um, you know, sometimes I do get a little bit snarky with the amount of product and the price of it. Sometimes, yeah, you know, if if you're a Games Workshop hobbyist, you'll know what I mean. It is like. Oh, you have a license to print money, so you're going to abuse that hard, are you? <laughs> okay, um, you know, uh, and they are like, yeah, they're just pumping out like they pump out quality stuff again and again. Um, it is as anyone who plays Warhammer will tell you, it's plastic crack. For some reason, you'll be like, look, you're, if you if you if you play Warhammer and you walk into a Warhammer shop and you can leave that Warhammer shop without having bought something, you're there's broke. something wrong with you. There's something inherently wrong with you. <laughs> you have you no money. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, you might see you literally cannot buy something or whatever. But yeah, like I, I was in there the other day actually, just picking up a new new unit for an army I'm building, and uh, uh, yeah, again, no money, but I've got enough money to buy plastic crack. This is what I mean, you see. Uh, but there was a guy, a kid in there, and he's convincing his dad to buy him some Warhammer models for his birthday, which wasn't quite there. But, you know, he was like he was telling his dad what he wanted, and like uh, the guy in Warhammer was explaining to him all the things he'd need. Have you got this? Have you got that? And he got to the point where he's like hearing about the things he just genuinely need, like plastic glue. Because he only had push fit models up until then, and he's like, "Oh God, your mum's gonna kill me!" And I'm just like, 
how many dads or mums have been sucking in by their kids like i just yeah. want one model and it's like 50 quid later you know mm. <laughs> so it's yeah it's um it's, it's it's great to see because they've they've really been working hard to deliver this content they've done the the people who've, who've worked hard on this deserve recognition it's great to see as alan said a company treating people with respect because these are the people that make your product work you know you can be the head of a massive company who are worth millions of or billions of dollars pounds whatever you want to say to it and if you don't treat the people who work for you well it will absolutely bite you in the backside mm -hmm. i've heard this argument before it's like it's the senior managers that make the decisions without them there's no company and that's why they get the big money but the reality is, is that everybody in a company contributes and without the people on the bottom or at the front lines nobody makes money either mm -hmm. so you everybody contributes equally and as i say good you know well done respect to games workshop for acknowledging that and for giving dues where dues are, are, are you know are needed for their staff well done yeah yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, you know, that leads us quite nicely on to something that's uh, less of a fun topic to talk about, but a pretty important <laughs> one. A company that isn't quite so good at taking yes, care of it. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, it's like the literal, like they, they're, they're the other end of the spectrum from where we just were, wasn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah, so yeah. on Wednesday morning, hundreds of Blizzard employees they all rallied together outside their, uh, like their main headquarters out in California, and they're all out there to protest uh, the company's handling of sexual harassment discrimi and discrimination charges. Um, uh, they basically said they won't be going back to work until the company ends its mandatory arbitration clause that's in its contract. Um, this is basically a contract provision, I've just taken a note out here, uh, that requires the parties to resolve a contract dis disputes uh, before an arbitrator rather than going through the court system. Mandatory binding arbitration may require the parties to waive specific rights such as their ability to appeal a decision. So that's effectively what they're saying is if something dodgy is going on in the company it has to be resolved internally and can't be brought outside um, and done through a court of law, which is horrendous um there's been some things come out i've just grabbed a couple of uh, kind of headline things that i've seen there can we just um, can we just okay can we just before we before we get into this can we just like, i want don't want to be like super like but, but there's a little bit of trigger warning here this stuff's nasty and mm. there is some really really horrible stuff so if you're you know if you're a little bit sensitive to some of this stuff like mm. you know maybe just skip forward a little bit because it ain't good yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like I said, I've, I've not got huge amounts of um, of examples. Just a couple I grabbed out. Just a couple of ones that kind of just jumped out to me a little bit. But obviously, you guys can throw some in if if there's some that really spoke to yourselves. But um, I mean, there was one particular one that I've just seen come out. Um, actually, it was uh, retweeted out or it was tweeted out by Alana Pierce, who works for um, not Naughty Dog, Sony Santa Monica, I believe she yep, works. Sony Santa Monica, yeah. Um, and she says an, an Activision IT worker pleaded guilty to mounting a camera under the sink in a manner to point at the toilet in 2018. And that's from court records. Um, so actually mount on a camera so you can visibly see people going to the toilet. That's obviously horrendous, unfor unforgivable. There's another one here. A lawsuit alleged that a male employee nicknamed his BlizzCon 2013 ho ho uh, hotel room as the Cosby Suite. Um, obviously in reference to things that happened with, with, with Bill Cosby and things. And um, some absolutely horrendous, horrendous things coming out from uh, from this company. Uh, I mean, is there, you know, you've, you've read a lot of stuff that's come out of here, boys. Is there anything, I mean, Chris, is there anything that's kind of spoken There was to one, which, one know? which I read and I just couldn't, I just couldn't mm. believe, which was um, there was a young female developer who took her own life after sexual harassment because someone had got hold, I think it was her nudes, mm. and was sharing them around, like, uh, and, and it was like a, a loud thing. I was like, it, it just, it, I, I can't, I cannot, I just, I can't, I, I just, I haven't got words for that. Mm. Like, I haven't got words for it. You know, the fact that this, this is not addressed in a, uh, yeah, it's just, it's it beggars belief. And, and good on these employees, just, just absolutely the right thing to do, mm -hmm. you know, because to be honest, at this point, I never want to play another Activision Blizzard game again, you know, no. and Diablo 2 remastered was, was one of my most looked forward to games. You know, Diablo 4 was, was shaping up. And to be honest, at this point, if they don't fix their company, then screw mm. them. Yeah. I, I don't want to support that company. And it seems very much that that key, that key point that they are uh, out there talking about, you know, with this mandatory arbitration, mm. that is the key. If they continue to have this clause in place, this thing, these things will never change because if somebody Absolutely. is doing something that is as horrendous as that and not getting held accountable for it because it's all done internally. Well, 
the other thing you said at the end of that, like the, the, the mandatory arbitration was, you also don't have the right to appeal it. Yeah. Like you have to deal with it internally. And if the company says nothing was done dodgy, that's it. That, yeah. That's the decision. You're done. It's like, mm. it's, it's, it, 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 I, I mean, I, I can't, I just, how is this a company operating in, in modern times who are as big as they are? And I, I, it's, it, it's, sta it staggers me. This kind of stuff is disgusting. It should not happen. And, and, you know, I, just, I want. I always want to drop every kind of imaginable swear word I can right now, because mm. you know, just mute I, yourself I, and scream into a pillow for a minute, on, and then <laughs> a, it, is, it is like that. You know, like yeah. I, I, I wish, I wish I could do something for these people, and I can't. And it's it, mm. the only thing I can do is say that as long as it remains like this, they won't have my money mm -hmm. because I won't support it. I will not. I can't. Yeah. I can't morally do that. It, it sounds, and it means I'm going to miss out on Diablo 2 Remastered, it, which is a game I really. Well, you know my reaction when you told me they announced it. Like, you know, I was, I, I, and, and, but, but my morals have got to be my first and foremost here, and I will not support the company that put mm. this out. If, and I know that that almost is going to hurt these developers as well. But no, that, that's the only way to get it to change. We have to take a stand, and we have to not support the company. Or, yeah. You know, it, it'll never change because like, they yeah, don't get affected I, by it. It won't change it. Me and Alan were actually talking this morning about Diablo 2 and Diablo 4. And we were talking about how excited we were for them coming up. And, you know, it completely just passed me by this morning that that is a Blizzard Activision property. It completely passed me by. Um, and from me saying earlier on this morning, oh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting that. You know, it's good value, this, that and the other. You know, scratch what I said there, Alan. You know, I'm very much of what, what Ratley says here. And personally, I think many people out there should do, you know, again, vote with your wallets and, and boycott these products that they're doing. Do you know what? It, it's, kind of, it's kind of a t two things in my mind. The first thing is, is that I'm still incredulous and maybe I'm naive. Maybe I'm living in a, in a bubble here. But what is wrong with human beings or what is wrong with the, I, I'm saying, I'm going to say men specifically, because that's the highest specifically, you know, percentage of people, but it's not necessarily just men. I don't know every single case, but the, the reality is, is what is wrong with these human beings in this day and age to think they can treat other human beings or other people that they work with in a work environment in these ways um, is just is astonishing to me. I wouldn't even dream of make of, of anything remotely near you know, anything like this. I treat whether it be male or female or whatever they choose to describe themselves as, it doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, it's a person that I'm working with and I purely base it on their competence and I treat them as such, depending on their competence of doing the job. Never mind for that. But, the, but it just astonishes me that, that this can still, people still think this is an acceptable way to act and that they can get away with it. But well, you know why, is, they you know can why I mean, that's, yeah. yeah, that's the point. The fact is, why? They can get away with it because, and th th this is the thing, we're talking about Activision Blizzard, but this is not the first time we've been talking about no. Activision mm, Blizzard. True. Blizzard is a company that is more interested in their profits and their bottom line, and they have been for years. Is it literally a couple of years ago since they took away the learning, the earnings of the, was it League of Legends guy? Because he was making some comment on a live yep. stream about the atrocities that are happening in China. And because of yep. Blizzard's shareholders in China, they actually took away his... It yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And this is and this is just another incident and a long line of incidents that show that. And I'm saying Blizzard, but I bet you there's another dozen companies out there that have got uh, that keeping it lower profile that are doing exactly the same thing. They would rather keep it quiet within their company because they're more concerned. They don't give a toss about their employees, whether it be female or male. They are merely tools to make more money. Mm -hmm. And if they have to write into their contracts ways to hide the suffering and the atrocious things that happen to these people within their company so they continue to make money they will do because that is all they're interested in is making money and the reality is is that we're all stepping up on our soapbox and i won't buy another blizzard how many years is it going to take for all of us to forget the next time because everybody was up in arms last time I'm, yeah. I don't buy much and, Blizzard anyway, and, and I get what you're saying. But I, I guess, just, but yeah, the point is, is the point is there needs to be change, and it's not just with Blizzard. It's within the industry, yeah. and it's so not just within the industry. It's within our culture. It's within the business culture as a whole, with people thinking they can get away with it, and they can because businesses are more interested in profit than they are people. 
And yes, mm -hmm. they're a business. Mm -hmm. And yes, they have to make money. But if they actually have a community, I don't know, Games Workshop, yeah, they might actually make money and be profitable for the right reasons because the people who work there want to work there and want everything to be a success because everybody benefits from it being a success. Not because they're written into a contract that says they can't complain because that weird guy in store number three keeps making sexual advances against them. Mm -hmm. And Blizzard don't want the aggro because it will look bad PR for them. That is what this is all about. And it's I, not I, just yeah. Blizzard. It's a I, bigger I, thing than that. And people do need to take a stand and mean it. Not just say, I won't buy the next game that Blizzard I, says. They need to stand up and they need to. And this is what is so great about this is the fact that the staff are walking out. And we yes. need to give them all the support we can. And we need to back them 100% in any way that we can. If they've got Kickstarters, if they've got Fun Raise Me, let's go on. Let's contribute. Let's do something for them because these people are taking a stand. And it's about time. Yeah, I agree. I 100% agree, Matt. And I think uh, you know, that whole thing of like you're saying, it's a culture thing. And the, the, it's exactly as I said, if, if a company is, is, is just enabling it so easily by just saying, you know, you can't have, you know, uh, you know, there'll be no repercussions for this, essentially. It's just, it's the ultimate enabler, isn't it? You know, you can do what you like, which as long as, long as, it, as, long as we can hush it in, in, in the, in this camp. You can do what you like. You know, we wash our hands of it. Essentially, that's it's just it's 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 so disgusting in terms of like that that a company even thinks like that. Yeah, you know, mm. the, the company, and then they go, oh, you know, um, uh, you know, the the company will basically, as you said, treat people as commodities instead of treating people as uh, you know valuable human beings who do contribute and create something wonderful, and they become this thing where, like you said, it's it's about money not about people and then we look at games workshop just because we've just talked about it who who are treating people like people who've worked hard and they reward them for it i mean we're not talking millions of pounds or anything mm. but these people i promise I, I i guarantee you those people walked in to a five thousand pound bonus and just went wow that's that's just that's just amazing um you know i i think that that whole um you know the whole culture they've, they've gone this company i work for have acknowledged what i do uh are, are, are you know are appreciative of me as a person the work i put in and yet when we go to blizzard we've got these this company who are literally saying we don't give a, a, a flying whatchamacallit about you yeah um you know they 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 they, they just want more money you're, you're here to make us money and whatever that takes is whatever that takes and if we mm. kill a few of you along the way because you burn out or you know, you take your own life because, like, um, that is that is what's happening here, and it's just, it's disgusting. And as Alan said, culture needs to change. Like, you know, I I, I, I I'm I'm putting on that. I, I I don't I don't buy much in the way of Blizzard stuff anyway, so I can't really say. But that's it. I'm done until something until things change. I'm done. I'm not yeah. buying Diablo two. I think I'm not think buying Diablo a... four. Yeah, if I could refund Diablo three right now. Like mm. I would absolutely refund Diablo three right now mm. if I had a way think... of returning the things I bought to get money back, and and shove it to the uh, to Blizzard. I absolutely would. This is disgusting. Yeah, I think that's an easy way that we can kind of support those people who are doing that walkout. Is yes, don't buy any more games, but equally don't don't play their games. Mm. You know that that can hurt them just as much because we all know that you know the games publishers and you know development teams you know they they measure their success on how much their games are being played you know so things like your, your Overwatch and stuff like that hugely popular games you know there shouldn't be people playing that online at all I know I, I do believe they did a uh, like a um, a specific day where they were boycotting all Blizzard mm -hmm. games but I think it needs to go further than that I think they need to be boycotted up until the point that um, that, that this gets resolved. Okay, so but I'm I'm going to say this, and so, so and this is not me defending people who continue to play, but there are people who, for example, let's just take World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is um is a big thing for some people. It's their life. Yeah, I'm not just talking about people who make a living off of it. I'm talking about people who, for their mental health and that, rely on it. I understand that it can be difficult to walk away from that. I'm not advocating you unless you've got any way of supporting your own mental health and keeping yourself well. But like, certainly don't buy anything microtransaction. Don't don't do anything that will in any way enrich Blizzard past your absolute bare minimum needs for your own mental health and but survival. Then World of Warcraft is a perfect example of a way that you can actually use the game as a social platform. Because they did to support that. Them in that way. Yeah. They oh, did they did that. do that, did they? Yeah, there was a, there was a huge um, World of Warcraft sitting where basically a, a load of people just logged in, and did nothing. 
just logged in and did nothing. They all just set themselves to just basically, and it was a, it was a protest. Um, and the Warcraft community is great for that kind of stuff generally, mm -hmm. to be fair, because it's such a such a, a vibrant and community where everyone's welcome that you know that, that a they, they tend to do this. Community well. at that as well. It's been yeah. around for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So they, I mean, not everyone in that community is great. Like every community, there's always some mm -hmm. arsehole in there. Um, but you know, it is it is over 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 overall a good well, community to support each other. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, Phil. Uh, yeah. Alan doesn't you know, even know you. Look, I don't even yeah. know Phil Weeks. It's just Craig was talking about the other day. Is talking about playing World of Warcraft. That's the only name I knew. Okay. No apologies. I'm sure you're a lovely man. Please let me in your clan. <laughs> but we've got to just like you say, take a stand. With New World coming out as well, like Warcraft guys, just like maybe look at moving to, to New World. If it's, even if it's only mm. temporary till this gets fixed, mm. you know. We've got to find ways to do this for mm. to support these people because it is unacceptable. This goes on, and and as you know, as gamers who who are passionate about these things, I get it. It's it's hard to walk away from something you love, but I'm absolutely unless there is something meaningful, and I mean properly meaningful, not just them saying we're looking into it, we're doing something. Until those employees really can report that things, then Diablo Two remaster is off my radar. Diablo Four is off my radar. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying you know, I was going to dive into Diablo on the on the mobile. That's mm. gone. Don't care. Mm. You know, um, mm. could, I think could, anyone can focus. help. Just think of a little way that you can help, you know, in that, and that, and just try and do what you can. Um, I think it will all all make a difference. Yeah. But um, oh, yeah, sorry about the downer. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's an important thing we need to talk about. Yeah, like I say, it's a bit of a bit of a down segment into into the podcast. But let's get back. Let's get back and talk about some games um, from some some better studios um, and <laughs> better companies who seem to do look after their employees a little bit more. Um, so. Alan, there's a quite well established well, game. It's, it's not exactly good news. I'm not going to lie. It's not good news, but it's not. I mean, it's, uh, I'm not coming in with rainbows and unicorns here. You know, I mean, it's, essentially, it's a game that a lot of people like that's basically being removed from the store. Mm. And it's a bit confusing, to be honest. I mean, Microsoft has declared that Forza Motorsport 7 is going, has reached its end of life status and will be removed from sale on September the 15th. This is a game that's barely four years old. But, oh, that's quite loud. Sorry yeah, about that. <laughs> barely, barely four years. Yeah, go. E3 2017. It's barely anyone. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you own the game or you have any DLC, you'll still be able to be able to access the game. Um, and apparently, the multiplayer services will also continue. Mm -hmm. But further purchases of the game and any of the DLC will no longer be possible. It will all be removed. It will no longer be available on Game Pass. But if you have purchased a DLC on Game Pass for the game, then apparently you'll receive a token. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but you'll receive a, a token for the game through the Xbox Message Center that will enable you to keep on playing. So I presume it will give you a, a, a copy of the game essentially, if you bought DLC. So basically, there's a bit of a loophole there. If you want to play Forza Motorsport 7, go and buy the cheapest DLC, and then you should be able to still play it. Um, uh, as I say, um, and also the other news is that it is currently on sale. Um, it's uh, £13.74 um, or 10 bucks if you if you're living in the US. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's just, it, the only thing I'd say on this, because I don't think it's a very deep story, it's just surprising to me that they're calling a game that's been out for four years has reached its end of life. But if you actually look on like the Xbox store, they don't go back further than like Forza Horizon 3, for example. The only reason 3's on there is because it was so popular. They would, I'm sure they would have taken that off and it would only be four and we're waiting for five. They have yeah. a big turnover of their games, don't they? And that's mm. the way they keep people buying the next one. But my only concern would be that seems like a very short time. It's yeah. So a lot of this is actually down to, and my understanding. I'm, I'm not saying this yeah. is the absolute gospel because I don't work for these companies. But my understanding is a lot of it, and the majority of it is down to licensing. So everything within these games, music, yeah. um, particularly in the Forza Horizon uh, games, okay. but also all the cars are all licensed for specific. Maybe it's amounts of time or specific uh, allotted sales or whatever it might be. They're, they are they are have got, have got a specific lifetime for that. Um, so that will be what it is. It, it, I, I can't see it being because they're just pulling it out from the store because again it makes no sense. You know no. you've got previous versions of Forza Horizon like we said on Game Pass currently, but again you'll find it. There's older older versions have got to points where they've removed them from store. Forza Horizon Two you cannot buy anymore again because these licenses had expired, and that I believe was all down to music. So I think yeah. that's generally where it's coming. And 
on the plus side for this, potentially, this is a nice little lead on to us getting some announcement for Forza Motorsport, which is the new mm. Forza Motorsport yeah. 8. Where it was, you know. and, and, and from previous things, it will no doubt be on Game Pass. So it's not mm. like you're going to have to put your hand in your pocket if you already have Game Pass to buy the next one. Yeah. So it's really a question of, you know, that, you know, at the end of the day, you can pick it up dead cheap if you want to own it. You can buy DLC on Game Pass and probably end up with a copy. So if, if you haven't already got it, you know, you've got literally, uh, you know, uh, five weeks, make sure yeah. you pick it up or a DLC and you've got it. But if you haven't, and you can't, it's like I'm not that interested. Then you're probably not that worried. Yeah. yeah. And, if you haven't and, got it already. <laughs> exactly. And, and if you're going to get tempted by the next one, it will probably be on Game Pass, and you can probably have it for now anyway. So why? So it's it's kind of a non-story in a sense, but that does make sense. What you're saying is the reason why they would do that. But yeah. Uh, yeah. But I've got to say, you know, a game, it's, you know, what was it, 2017? E3 2017 yeah. Yeah. announced yeah. there? And I mean, still an absolutely stunning game. You know, it yeah. makes me really excited for the future of Forza Horizon. Um, oh. and, and I think, you know, that's a, effectively a last-gen engine. You know, it was mm. optimised for Xbox um, One X, One, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and the way it came out. Um, but really, I mean, I think... You know, seeing what's happening with the next generation of, of engines coming forward, things like Unreal 5, um, is really exciting going forward as well. And there's actually been a bit going on recently, hasn't there, with that, Chris? Well, yeah, I mean, the Unreal Engine 5, obviously, we all know that Unreal Engine 5 is on its way. And um, we're expecting uh, Unreal Engine 5 games to start rearing their heads soonish, I guess. Mm. Um, and uh, we saw some work that the, uh, the Coalition have been doing. Uh, uh, the Xbox sort of studio, the uh, the guys responsible for the Gears of War uh, license, and this is the UE5 technical demo. They call it Alpha Point. Um, and Digital Foundry did some interesting breakdowns on it. We, we learned some information from some uh, presentations as well about what we're looking at and what they've managed to get working, what needs more work. Um, and uh, I mean, and some of the stats that came out of this were absolutely staggering. Like they did a, there's a, I'm not sure if it's in this. If this is just the Alpha Point, but um, we've got the there's also a um, a character model demo. They showed a character they'd modelled, um, and and what was it? One of the one of the stats that came out was that one eyelash in a UE5 character model uh, has more polygons than an entire character model from the Xbox 360. Mm. And <laughs> you, you know, Crazy. you just kind of sit there and go, "Huh?" It's like it's such a staggering yeah you know, thing. I mean, we learned about the lighting, we learned about how lumens working, how nanites working, and the biggest takeaway seems to be that at this exact moment in time. Um, the coalition can't get a steady 60 fps at 4k on a series x and that's not to say that there's a problem and that the series x can't do it um it's more that they're having to they're obviously unreal engine isn't even officially out yet this is all still techno yeah, beta stuff um they're working to closely with epic to make these improvements so we can see you know 4k 60 titles with lumen and nanite all running seamlessly but it seems to be lumen in particular that's that's, that's causing a lot of problems to keep keep the frame rate high um mm. So it's very interesting to see, you know, so Lumen is the lighting engine. It's the, yes, it's, it's, yeah, essentially it's responsible for like the way that the lighting works and the ray tracing I'm, and things I'm like that. I'm nodding like I know, but I, I, I want to do this watch the digital <laughs> foundry video. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, Lumen, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, they said that was something to do with light. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, Lumen, it's, it's, it's luminosity, it's, it's, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lumen's a measurement of uh, like measurement yeah. of light, isn't it? So it's yeah, like of one course, lumen yeah, is one candle. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's really interesting to see the, the, the work especially since, uh, you know the coalition are well renowned for their graphical work in in unreal mm. uh, i mean if you look at we've, we've talked about this before gears 5 like i don't think i still to this day don't think that gets the credit it deserves among mm. the community for the graphics in it you know like i keep seeing these people post these screenshots of things and going yeah look at this it's so much better on this than anything else and no one ever goes to gears 5 for showcase but if you know what gears 5 is doing on a technical level holy hell mm. do you know what i mean that thing is stunning graphically like you know and and to not see that reference, then guy like, yeah, this is this is the team that brought you this on Xbox One, you know, an mm. Xbox One X, you know, it's like, are you, are, how could you not like just look at it and go, these guys know what they're doing. So it's why they're working closely with Epic. Um, so we should see that I think they've got it running absolutely rock solid at 30 FPS. Um, so they could drop a game tomorrow, but it'd be 30 FPS, rock solid frame rates. Mm. To get it to go to 60, they need a little more work. They're getting around the 47, like 40 to 47 mark on the on the frame rate at the moment. 
Which, as we all know, for Alan isn't a problem because Alan can't see anything above 30 FPS. That's yeah. exactly you it. Know, but, Although um, I, haven't, the... I haven't tested that theory on the 40 <laughs> FPS yeah. on a 120 mega, gigahertz uh, monitor. Yeah, I did watch that video from Digital Family. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll actually memorise some of the stuff that they said. <laughs> Except you went to gigahertz instead of megahertz. So megahertz, you know. megahertz. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, these 15 frames per second per eye. <laughs> But um, but equally, like it's great to see them working closely and taking this on board and this work being done. And it will, it will this will benefit every platform. This will benefit every you know game. Like we're going to get better frame rates. We're going to get higher things. But that demo was absolutely stunning in terms yeah, of they yeah. quickly they were like this is what we've quickly managed to do in the last few months. And you're like mm. holy hell, this looks incredible. You know this is like like movie level. And one thing that if you when when you watch that alpha point again. This uh, this whole section here we're now watching actually all the um the way that is that is blooming that's all done by uh, coalition all that effect there is their work so they're actually bringing stuff into Unreal Engine five already and allowing mm. them to do more things and creating their own plugins and their own bits and pieces so it's absolutely stunning to see what these studios are gonna you know like they said this isn't the game but this is what we're gonna be they they're, they're yeah. saying this is what you're, the kind of thing you're I'll going say, to see in game bearing in mind I mean that's no stunning that. there's no, there's no there's no, nothing else in that other than the environment so obviously yeah. and I remember was it again you, you might be able to touch on this more than I would because I'm no expert but they're talking about was it the the mi uh, bits per second or millisecond so how many things can happen within a second and yeah. they're allowed what's that one sixteenth of a second for rendering the environment and they want to <laughs> they want to bring that down I'm trying to sound right I know, I'm trying to learn I'm trying to educate myself chaps it's a long it is quite a complicated but you know I, I, i've been listening to, to, to some of the it's, tech it's, stuff, it's a resource so. management game isn't it at the end of the yeah. day it's like yeah. you've got you've got you know this much space to fill mm. you can fill it with what you want but you can't go over that space you know or you've got this much mm. time to do the things you want to do can you make it happen in that time and it's how they re manage those resources exactly. i think what, what what the coalition are doing with with epic here is is working on a way to enhance either the amount of resources available or you know um, the level at which they can process those resources. This, this is why, like, like you know, sub programs like Lumen and Nanite are able to take less time away from the rendering of the environment, which means they've got more time to be able to exactly. do the actual gameplay. He definitely watched like it. That. So He's I definitely, definitely watched it. Although I would just like to put in as a segue when we were just watching that demo in the bottom right hand corner it says one hundred plus million triangles. And all I could think of was Dairy Lee triangles and wondering if you went in really, really small, <laughs> you'd see lots of little Dairy Lee triangles. Well you see, Alan, that's the problem. You've got to remember they don't, they don't measure it in Dairy Lee triangles, it's Toblerone triangles. That's Toblerone. That's it's the yeah. nougat, isn't it? It's the nougat. <laughs> Yeah. That's what nanite is actually. Nanite isn't actually yeah. a thing. It's just the nougat. nougat in I love this, Sally. You just speak to the wider audience, don't you? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like you know, <laughs> including everyone. <laughs> but uh, in, in all seriousness, there is a lot of work being done on Unreal Engine Five from external sources. Epic are open mm. to this. They're going to one of the one of the studios you know Unreal best, um, and they're they're doing some amazing work, and it looks fantastic. Mm. It's great to see that this this is you know we're getting we're getting our first look at what things are going to look like, you know, and really yeah. that, that sort of wetting our palettes for like this thing that's coming along. And, you know, I, I was, I, I look at the character model as well. And if this kind of stuff is all coming together to create a, a game in the near future and it's another gears game. Mm. Oh boy. Yeah, I mean, Marcus yeah. Phoenix has um, never been pretty. We yeah. might actually say that's a pretty looking Marcus Phoenix on the next one. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Like, unfortunately, uh, I haven't got the video up for that one. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of add on to that. You know, we've also not seen, because again, this is so early on, you know, there's, mm. there's obviously been the announcement of the FSR, which is AMD's equivalent to the deep learning super sampling, which is going to, I mean, it's already played a huge part in a lot of PC games, enabling mm. you to run things at, you know, with full ray tracing, with absolutely fantastic graphics, with that deep learning super sampling, which is effectively running lower resolution, but making it look fancy, as, a, mm. as if you like, as a, a lame way of doing it. So this, all this FSR, which is AMD's equivalent of NVIDIA's technology, if that's, that is now coming over to the PlayStation 5 and coming over to the Xbox Series consoles, that is going to be a game changer moving forward to really deliver these fantastic assets at rock solid, fast and fluid frame rates. That's what Because at the minute they're having to use, yeah, because that's the thing, because the minute they're using the internal Unreal Engine 5 temporal yes. upsampling, mm -hmm. it's not the AI upsampling, right. which is the really smart stuff. Yeah. So. Like you say, I think this is only going to go one way, and it's going to be like it's going to be mind blowing. In a couple of years, we're all going to be sitting there going, "Huh?" And it's going to it's going to beg back to that point where I remember sitting at a, uh, uh, the the dizzy egg on the screen on my Spectrum, thing, and when it would jump through something else, it would change color. And I thought that was the cutting edge of graphics. Yeah, yeah. You know, things are never going to look any better than yeah, this. Yeah. And then 3D came along. I'm like, oh my god, there's actual headlights in these cars, and 
Oh, they produce light. Oh, and now like, of, we're talking about, you know, ray trace. This is crazy. It's absolutely first crazy. of all, you guys have to take it one step further. Now, I haven't understood a bloody word you've said for the last five minutes. <laughs> Um, and secondly, it does sort of bring to memories like it's like back in the back in the very early days when we when Duke Nukem first came out and you were running around your 3D levels with your sprites for the monsters. And then 30 days later, Doom came out and went, oh, I don't think so. That was yeah. Quake. Quake. Yeah, Quake. Quake. That was it. Sorry. Quake came out and it went, yeah, we your sprites. Idiots. That's so last year. And that was so revolutionary at the time. And I have to say that UE5 is, at the moment, it is very, very early days. And this is one of the things, as you say, Coalition worked very hard with Epic when it was the, the previous engine to actually work with them to make it work much better and to really make a resource that was really going to benefit the industry. And I can't help but feel they're obviously doing the same thing now. But as you say, it's going to be a while off before we see the results of that. But very exciting to start to see that, that top level, that next level of, of graphical fidelity in the in the software and the games that we're going to see moving forward very yeah. exciting yeah definitely mm. fsr no, we, think... dlss bb <laughs> bbc wxyz that's it you know all of those acronyms i love taking yeah. them all in there that's fantastic yeah. asmr you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean that's the thing you know you you look at you know look at the last last generation let's well let's look at 360 for example when you look at something like um let's take a, a perfect dark zero when that came out yeah that was at the time it was the first sort of hd game you know it was 720p and it was like look how crisp it is but it wasn't that great i mean you look at it now it's pretty ropey looking and you look at that and you move forward to the end of the generation when you have something like gta 5 come out and you're like, it is just, how is that running on the, like, the same hardware? So yeah. if you just, uh, you imagine where we're going to be after a few years with this current hardware. And the fact that because of COVID and because of how everything's been, I think we're, we're slower to get to where we need to be because yeah, everything's been put back. All the teams have been working from home. Things have been more and more difficult, you know, to... to to, to move those steps forward so yeah like you say i think in a couple of years we're, we're a couple of years behind where we would have been but in a couple of years we're going to see some this, you talk about those stuff. dates actually because when i was doing the research for the gta 5 story i was actually looking at the dates for when san andreas was released san andreas was released to get this two years after vice city san andreas one of the seminal gta games all that extra content two whole years yeah. it's been 10 years since we've seen a gta game mm -hmm. and it's the same yeah. with these triple a titles they are no, mate, so mate. complicated now no that's, that's not it that's not it it's because it's because rockstar can sit there and go is it still printing money yes then yeah. leave it we don't need another yeah. one yeah. You know? yeah. it's <laughs> don't work on a new game just make a new car for gta online yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's exactly that you know oh, i just drop a new bit of content where it's car focused now why? Well, there's a Fast and Furious movie coming out. We can tie in with that. Yeah. It'll get people playing it again. Then they'll spend more money. Hey, you know. True. Yeah. True. Well, you know, it's. It, I mean, it's good stuff. You know what they're doing. It's not for me, but you know, it's it's incredibly popular. And what they're doing is for those working, people that it? play that game, man. That they just they just drop quality content drop oh, after yeah. quality content drop. Yeah. You know, and I think the, the credit to them. Credit to. Them. Mm. It's not my game. That's incredible what they do with that with online. To be fair, Definitely. absolutely incredible. Definitely. Great. Cool. Well. It's been lovely again this week to have a nice chat with you chaps. Um, I think we're up to about an hour and a half now, and I think we're going to wind it down. We were going to talk something about the Avengers, but to be quite honest with you, I cannot bring myself to even talk about it. Um, I, I said think to we've Alan, kicked it enough. Yeah, it I enough, said to we? Alan earlier, I said, oh, to, to talk about this, I really feel like I need to have played this content that's coming And you out. don't want to put um, yourself through that, mate. Yeah, and first off, I'd sold the disc. I haven't got it anymore. And even if I did have it, I wouldn't be installing it again. I cannot play that game again. It was just <laughs> yeah. so terrible. So uh, on that lovely note, I think uh, it's going to be a bye from myself, a bye from Alan. Bye-bye. And a bye from Chris. Thank you all, one and all. And a bye Enjoy. from everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.